In this video, we are going to cover migrations and seed data features in Entity Framework Core. Migration is a way to keep the database schema in sync with the Entity Framework Core model by preserving data. The migration process has two steps – create a migration and apply a migration. As we already said, our database schema must be aligned with the database model and every change in that model needs to be migrated to the database itself. We have prepared a project with the database model containing entity and context classes and applied different configuration options. Additionally, we have installed the required libraries and registered application context as a service in the startup class. All of these are required to support the Entity Framework Core usage in our application. Entity Framework Core provides a method called migrate to execute migration actions for us. So, with these preparations in place, all we have to do is to create and execute migrations with a set of simple commands. If you want to learn more about migration in Entity Framework Core and download the source code, you can visit our article on this topic. The link is in the description below. Also, we have a great set of articles covering Entity Framework Core in depth, so feel free to read them as well. The link to the series is in the description too. Before we start with the first migration, we have to install Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools library to support migrations in our application. Now, Let's create our first migration by executing the add migration command with the migration name. After we press the enter key, our migration will be completed. You don't have to use the package manager console to execute migration commands. You can do that through the Windows CLI. And in the mentioned article, we have explained how. After we execute the add migration command, EF Core does several things behind the scenes to prepare the migration. The first thing it does is inspecting our class, associated entity classes, in this case only the student class, and any configuration we applied. After that, it creates three different files in the migrations folder. The application context model snapshot file holds the model of the database and it is updated every time a new migration is added. The other two files, initial migration and initial migration.designer, are files that contain and describe the newly created migration. Let's inspect the initial migration file. This file has two methods named up and down. The up method consists of commands that will be executed when we apply this migration. As an opposite action, the down method will execute commands when we remove this migration. In this case, it will just drop this created table. After we have successfully created our migration, we have to apply it for changes to take effect in the database. To do that, let's execute the update database command. As a result, we are going to have our student table created with all the provided configuration. In addition to the student table, we have another created table, EF Migration History. EF Core uses this table to track all the applied migrations. So, this means if we create another migration in our code and apply it, EF Core will apply only the newly created migration. It does that by storing the unique ID in the mentioned table, which is the same as the file name created with the migration. We have already explained the purpose of the up and down methods in our initial migration file. But all the code in these methods is generated by EF Core. If required, we can add our custom code too. So 
Let's modify the initial migration class by using the migration builder object and calling the SQL method where we pass the create procedure command with the name of the procedure and the select statement. Of course, we have to modify the down method by using the same object and the same method but this time we pass a draw procedure command. We should make sure to have the SQL method in the down method to execute the opposite actions if we decide to remove the migration. Now, we can delete our database just to simulate the initial state of the SQL server and only apply the migration. We don't have to create it, it's already created. And we can see the procedure created. Right now, our model and context classes are in the main project together with the migration files. But in many real-life projects, models and context classes are in a separate project. For such projects, executing migrations couldn't be possible with the setup as we have in our project. Let's try to demonstrate what we mean. The first thing we have to do is to create another .NET Core class library project and name it Entities. Then let's install Microsoft Entity Framework Core package and Microsoft Entity Framework Core relational package and add the reference to this new project. After that, let's copy the application context and the student classes, paste them in the Entities project and remove the Entities folder from the main project. As soon as we do that, we need to change the namespace in the application context class from efcoreapp.entities to just entities. We have to do the same thing for the student class. Furthermore, we have to modify the using directives in the startup class, in the migration files, and in the controller. Having done all that, our project should build successfully. Now we can try to add another migration. But we get an error message which explains that our EFCore app project doesn't match our migration assembly entities. This error message is great because it provides us with an explanation of how to solve our problem. All we have to do is to modify the application's context registration by pointing the migration assembly to the main project. Now we can run the same command again, but this time it executes successfully. We can see the test migration file has no code in the up and down methods, and this is normal because we didn't change anything. But we completed our required task. We've learned how to create migrations from a separate project, but as a result, we have created an empty migration which does nothing in our database. When we create a migration that we are not satisfied with, we can easily remove it by typing the remove migration command in the package manager console window. After a few seconds, our previous migration will be removed. Excellent, now we can move on. In most of our projects, we want to have some initial data in the created database. So as soon as we execute the migration, we want to populate the database with some initial data. This action is called data seeding. To seed some data, we are going to modify the onModelCreating method by using the ModelBuilder object with the entity method of type student. 
and call the hasData method where we provide a new student object with ID property name John Doe and the age of 30. Let's add one more student object with the name Jane Doe and the age of 25. Now we can create a new migration. And apply it. In our table, we can see the data inserted. We can place all of the configuration code inside the onModelCreating method, and that will work as it's supposed to. As you can see, our onModelCreating method is readable and easy to maintain. But what if we had a larger project with more classes? and more data to seed. Our method would become hard to read and maintain. EFCore provides a better way of creating a fluent API configuration by using the iEntity type configuration interface. By using it, we can divide the configuration for each entity into its own separate configuration class. So let's see how to do that. In the entities project, we're going to create a new configuration folder and inside a new student configuration class. This class must inherit from the iEntity type configuration interface. Of course, we don't want to throw an exception. So let's modify this method by setting up the table mapping configuration setting the age property not to be required and configuring the default value for the isRegular student property. Then we're going to use the hasData method, copy our student objects from the context file and paste it here. Additionally, we add a new object just to have something to create a migration for. All we have to do now is to modify the onModelCreating method by removing all the code and calling the applyConfiguration method with the student configuration parameter. And that's all. We can now add a new migration and apply it. Let's check that in our database. For every created migration, we had to apply its changes manually. And this is quite ok. But when we deploy our application, it would be nice to have initial data at the moment in the database. What would be even nicer is that we don't have to do that manually, but to start all the required migrations and seed all the required data as soon as the application starts. Well, we're going to show you how to do exactly that. Let's create a new migration manager class in the entities project. It's going to be a static class because we're going to create an extension method to start all the migrations at the application startup. Now, Let's open the NuGet package manager and install Microsoft ASP.NET Core hosting.abstractions library to be able to use the iHost type in our code. And modify the class by adding a new static migrate database method as an extension to the iHost type. Inside this method, we create a scope with the services.createScope method and fetch the application context service with the scope.serviceProvider.getRequiredService method. With the app context variable, we can call the database property and execute the migrate method. Lastly, 
we return the host object. The next step is to call this method in the program CS class. Finally, let's remove the database one more time. Then we can start our application. And once the application is up and running, we can inspect the database to see if everything is as we expect. We already learned how to remove migration if we haven't applied it. But in case we have, we can't remove it just like that. We need to revert it to the specific migration. So to show how migration reverting works, we are going to add another object in the student configuration class. Then create a migration and apply it. We can see in the database that a new row has been added. Now we can revert it by using the update database command and specifying the name of the previous migration. If we check our database now, we're gonna see it was reverted to the specific migration values. Finally, if we want to make an SQL script of all our migrations, we can do that by executing script migration command. This command will create a script file for us. So that's all for this video. We would highly appreciate your support by hitting those like and subscribe buttons down there. Of course, don't forget you can visit the CodeMaze blog to download the source code. Additionally, you can subscribe to our mailing list to get notified about our new content and videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.